A big theme we're noticing with patch 1.5 is a ton of undocumented or secret changes. I mean, there are literally secret changes in the patch notes. During a recent live stream, one of the devs described how some of the things added with patch 1.5 are even larger secrets that are going to take a bit more time to uncover. But in this video, I want to go over some of the simpler changes, some of the more complicated changes, and even some of the more mysterious changes that have popped up as a result of this and probably contribute to the larger ARG or something else going on with this game. But of course, as you yourself have been enjoying and playing El uh, Cyberpunk 2077, I encourage you to comment anything you've discovered or found with this new update or just in the game in general down below. But one of the first things I want to highlight is around Delamain. Seems like with patch 1.5, Delamain got some additional interactions in that the Delamain car you can get as a quest reward will actually talk to you more. This typically when getting in or doing something else in the world. And we talked about this in the last video. I got a few more of these interactions to play in the time since then though but even further a pretty cool new one is that there actually seems to be an interaction now between Delamain and Skippy assuming you get into the car with Skippy equipped. Fun fact, women account for 44% of road rage victims. Impressive weaponry. Why thank you. If you're not familiar with Skippy, it's basically this special smart weapon that can actually talk and interact with you. It's pretty simple, just a quest at this location, you just go here and literally pick up Skippy and I'll let you discover the rest for yourself if you've somehow always missed this guy. Another pretty cool one is, it seems like CDPR actually added in a new static location and spawn for Ozob's clown car. Ozob is a pretty interesting character in Cyberpunk, but perhaps even more interesting is his rather funny looking car. It seems like with just patch 1.5 and you static spawn point for this vehicle is now in Japantown in Westbrook. Just fast travel to Skylines and Salinas and you'll notice this parking sign across the street. In this parking area on a lift you'll be able to find the clown car itself that you could either lower the lift or I prefer to just drive off the lift because it feels more in the nature of Ozob. It's surprisingly quick, looks very cool and although this car itself isn't new to the world, you could have technically found this as a rare spawn previously, it seems like this consistent location is new. Unfortunately though this is not actually something added to your garage, it is just a place you can always find the car, and if it is destroyed, it's gone forever. The Ozobs in Cyberpunk lore are a legit gang of killer clowns, something pretty horrifying. But although this is super speculative, this addition does make me wonder, are there any plans to add those guys in in a DLC? That would certainly be a pretty epic new gang to experience. Nibbles got some updates and upgrades with patch 1.5, but before we dive into that, I want to shout out today's very special video sponsor with Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community. They have literally thousands of online classes and members from over 150 different countries. I genuinely don't know if I could name 150 different countries. So some of you know from back in the psych fun fact days, I have a degree in psychology. And if you want the secret to the single most interesting thing you'll learn across a four-year degree in psychology, it's human memory and it's not even close. The How Your Memory Really Works class by Dr. Andre Clapper is something I genuinely think everyone should sign up for. This class is going to give you the context to understand how your brain works, which is actually pretty important in life. Why do you forget certain things? Why do you remember other things? And perhaps the most critical point of all, why sometimes your memory is actually pretty inaccurate. Yeah, a bunch of your memories probably didn't exactly happen the way you think they did. And the best part is this class will immediately apply to your life. You are literally always remembering things and using in your memory. And there's a whole host of psychology classes I've been diving into to expand my knowledge on Skillshare, like the psychology of player experience on game design, so I could truly understand why CDPR didn't add in police chases. But the beauty of Skillshare is their classes on all kinds of relevant life skills, like the intro to investing in either stocks or cryptocurrencies, or even how to just take better pictures on your iPhone. This one has unironically upgraded my Instagram game in a serious way. And you know, the whole website's totally ad free, which is pretty awesome. So don't wait, as the first 1000 people to click on my link below or use my code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And trust me, this is one of those things that you're gonna wanna jump into, as the skills you learn here could genuinely have a huge impact on your life. But looking back over at Nibbles, is there a variety of 
additional locations that Nibbles can interact with and some new animations that will play in your apartment now. Nibbles will do the familiar of just sitting on many of the various objects in your apartment, including some new ones, but he'll also do things like scratch around at and mess with your carpet, which is pretty nice. CDPR actually mentioned this change during their stream, but here's an example of what is actually different. Unfortunately, despite me testing this quite extensively, it does not seem like he has any interactions with this new iguana. If you want to know how to get the iguana, you could watch my last video. Gorilla Arms got a change, and that is now it'll actually increase your body stat by 2, 4, or 6, depending on which rank of Gorilla Arms you are using. Funny enough, it seems like this was something Gorilla Arms were always supposed to do. This is less of a new feature and more of a bug fix enabling a new feature. It is a bit haphazardly implemented though, as you don't actually see this effect on your character. Your body stat isn't changed, and using these weapons, it'll still appear as if your body stat needs to be higher to use them, but as you actually go to use them, you'll now have significantly less recoil because the Gorilla Arms are in fact boosting your body stat. This will benefit you in all of the various skill checks that do apply to Gorilla Arms, even outside of just weapons. Max Tack now shows up after the Cyber Psycho sighting Smoke on the Water. During the Cyber Psycho mission, you're tasked with taking out an ex-NCPD and Special Forces operative. It's on the Pier in Pacifica, a pretty simple fight overall, but you'll notice, specifically if you don't kill him, and rather just incapacitate him, Regina Jones will say Max Tack is coming to the area and you better get out of there. If you wait a few days and typically have to fast travel around a bit, but do return, you'll find both NCPD and a Max Tack member here, their vehicles having a rather large presence and all of the bodies accumulated in the middle as they're investigating what happened. It was actually pretty hard to verify if this was indeed a new change. I tested it on a few older characters and I didn't see this, so I think it's a new change. If not, it's just a rather subtle or secret feature that after literal hours of googling I couldn't find in the old version of the game. In a very similar vein, it also does now seem like Trauma Team will rescue somebody from Mega Building H6 in Santa Domingo. There's a fast travel right to Mega Building H6, and it seems like this is a new random event that can occur. Trauma Team seems to fire to clear out enemies and then fly in to rescue somebody inside, and then they'll quickly fly away once they have them. I really love these new encounters and the events throughout the world that are popping up more and more now with Patch 1.5. In the last video, we talked about a police chase that was added, not a legit thing, just a scripted thing that can pop up, and just makes the world overall feel a lot more lived in. I would love if even in future updates, they continue to add things like this. Mod crafting and mod acquisition has been completely reworked with patch 1.5. Tons of people have been spending a lot of time and energy looking for specific crafting specs, like Armadillo, which is one of the most powerful armor mods that you can get in this game, but also other popular mods, and basically the change with these mods is these are now randomized. You'll probably find a bunch of posts online or even videos that do claim to be the new spawn location for Armadillo or even Legendary Armadillo, but the reality is it seems like for most armor mods and definitely for Armadillo, they're actually randomized drops now. So there are certain locations you can go to find a drop of an armor mod plan that you will then learn. There's one right next to this purchasable bike. There's going to be one at the Scanner Hustle in Pacifica. These are randomized, so you have a chance at getting Armadillo here but you have a chance at also getting something else like I did. And the rarity you find here is going to just be solely based off your crafting spec and the rarity you find isn't actually relevant. Basically the way crafting works in Cyberpunk, and this was changed in patch 1.3 and changed slightly more in patch 1.5, is what level of mod you craft is solely dependent on your crafting skill. So for example, once you have crafting skill 18, you will always be creating legendary mods. It doesn't matter what level of crafting spec you find, it'll automatically be upgraded once you get 18 crafting skill. And this will apply to all the various skill levels. And now with patch 1.5, a huge quality of life change, it'll actually now tell you as you're crafting the mod what level you need to get to the next version. So you can see here, it's telling me I need level 9 to upgrade to the next level of this mod. And this will apply blanketly to all of the various mods. But now looking at the two more curious additions to come with patch 1.5 to Cyberpunk, it seems like these may be relevant to the ARG or they're just secret or hidden missions in the game. Cyberpunk 2077 has this FF0 06 B5 mystery involving these mysterious rings, statues all over Night City, and more of these were actually added with patch 1.5, as well as there's an actual ARG that has been put on pause but maybe resuming soon with this game. I made a full video diving
diving into all of this last year. If you're interested, I'll have it linked in the description. But even further, again, as I mentioned, one of the devs said during a live stream after patch 1.5 that there are some deeper mysteries with this update that will take a bit longer to figure out. So the first of these mysterious new additions is Angie on the dock. You can find this new crying woman on the wave breaker on the coast in Haywood Wellsprings. She's all the way at the end of the dock, so you have to go to the lower level. And basically her name is Angie, and she doesn't really have any notable interactions. You just find her here crying, very sad about something. But if you dive down into the water and you could use your scanner to make this easier, you'll actually find this key down there. As you imagine, after retrieving this key, you can swim back up and give the key to her where a couple of things will happen. She'll actually give you a bunch of eddies, she'll stop crying and thank you, but even further, she then also opens up this very interesting eddy diagram. It seems to basically be stock prices for various companies in the world, but at least the top half is rather old, dated as being May 3rd, 2071. Cyberpunk 2077 obviously takes place in 2077, so it's about eight years old. But at the bottom, it says there will be some kind of public data presentation on Monday at 12 p.m. GMT plus nine that being Japan standard time. Now, this whole thing is odd to me. It definitely seems like it must be relevant somehow. If it was just a simple quest where you dive into the water to save this person and get her a key, it could just be a joke by CDPR. Maybe someone at their offices in real life lost a key and this is poking fun at them. But this data pad she takes out after with all of this numbers and information on it and dates does make me think there's something else going on here, something greater going on here. Especially when we consider that there is an ongoing ARG and there is this other lingering mystery. But separate from that, there's also this mysterious new button that has been added on a street corner in Charter Hill. It says, don't press me after dark, and when you press the button, song lyrics will pop up. There's a wide variety of lyrics that will appear after pressing this, and if you do in fact press it after dark, it'll have the major consequence of turning off all of the surrounding lights. Yeah, it's actually pretty simple. Just turn the lights around you on or off, as well as actually displaying a song lyric. Some of these are fairly easy to recognize, like, hello darkness, my old friend, while a few other ones are a bit more obscure. Here are all of the song lyrics that do pop up when you're doing this. Some of them are scrolling. This is another one where it's like, is this something? Cyberpunk has this connective tissue with music as all of the major quest names are actually song names. Are these song lyrics somehow related to something larger? Is this ARG connected? Are either of these ARG connected? To me, it seems like Angie seems far more likely to have something deeper going on, but in general, it's just interesting to dive further into these mysteries. If you want to track what kind of discoveries are being made more recently, as there have been some new things coming out. I'll have a link to the subreddit around this down below, as well as Game Detectives. With that said, that's some of the hidden features added with patch 1.5 to Cyberpunk, as well as some things that may have just been here always, but it's extremely hard to tell. Honestly, the most tedious part about making these videos is discovering things and trying to verify whether or not they're new. So unfortunately, something in this video might have been in the game already. I spend literally hours with each of these videos googling and trying to search to see was this in the old version, but considering some of these are very obscure, that can be very difficult. At the very least, I figure this is still a pretty obscure feature of the game, so it is still fun to highlight them. With that said, hopefully you guys did find this one informative. These are very fun to make and explore the deeper side of cyberpunk. With that said, as always, again, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.